Hey everybody, it's Kathy, and today I want to talk about the dreaded ingredients, parabens and sulfates. Um, first, let's talk about parabens, and I've got just some little notes here that I've scribbled down um, about things I want to tell you. So, parabens are in just about everything. If you look at shampoos, toothpaste, shaving creams, um, soaps, um, personal lubricants. <laughs> Um, anyway, you can find it in a lot of things, deodorants. Um, the problem is that it's also found when they, when they look at, at cancer tumors, they find a certain amount of parabens in there. So there is thought to be a connection. Now, it's obviously still considered safe. This is something that is highly debated. Um, but, you know, the FDA is still allowing it to be used. That's why it's still in all of our products. Um, but when you think about the fact that that parabens are what's it called estrogenic, which means they can mimic the hormone estrogen. And we know that that plays a role in developing breast cancer. And then the fact that it's showing up in the actual tumors, the way they look at it now is they say that um, it, it needs to be studied further, um, that you know they're not sure to what degree it affects us. My feeling is, there are plenty of other ways to um, preserve products, and that's what parabens are used for. They're a very inexpensive preservative. Um, so I just choose. I, I'm not. I'm not hardcore. I'm not one of those people that you know. I'm, I'm using organic toothpaste, and, and I have tried <laughs> organic toothpaste actually and didn't like them. But anyway, aside from that, I definitely am getting par parabens in my life. We all are, unless you are really vigilant. So the way I look at it is. I will try to control the ones that I see and that I'm aware of and that are and that are easily um, controlled, and then the ones that I'm getting through food additives and other things. I'm just, you know, I'm not going to spend my life worrying about it. That's sort of my attitude about everything. I am not a purist when it comes to chemicals. Certain chemicals I love; they're a big part of what helps us in skincare. So I kind of walk that fine line between how much can I can I fairly easily control and have some uh, choice about, and then the rest, I'm just not going to worry about it. So when it comes to to skincare products and shampoos in, in particular, I do look for those because now they're so widely available for those products that don't have parabens. Um, I just feel like why take a risk? Skin, I mean, uh, breast cancer is so prevalent now. So many people are affected. A ask around. You'd be shocked how many people you meet have had breast cancer. It's shocking. Um, because my intake form asks um, if you've ever had cancer, skin cancer, and uh, because it asks that, I am very aware of how many women have suffered from breast cancer. And I should include the men too. You know, guys out there get it too. But um, I think about my kids and when they were babies and I started being aware of what was in their products in particular. It's possible that we can all take a little bit of something, but when we are completely, constantly loading ourselves up with all of this stuff, and you know, it gets into the water, the drinking water, because we shower, it goes down the drain, um, it gets filtered, and then we end up drinking it. So when you add all this up, it's kind of, I just feel like it would have to have an effect eventually. It just doesn't make sense otherwise. And the fact that it is showing up in tumors, that says something to me. So um, so that's the parabens. That's why I like to stay away from parabens whenever possible. Um, okay, so now I want to talk about sulfates. You often see them called SLS, SLES, one of them's es ester sulfates. Um, sulfates are used, as you know, for, as foaming agents. They are essentially a detergent. Um, and they are, in fact, known irritants. So. That alone to me is kind of like, well, why do I want to put this on my skin? Because we know that any type of irritation sets off a chain of events that ultimately ages our skin. But there is some belief that sulfates have um, a carcinogenic factor as well. At this point in time, they are considered safe still. Uh, the Food and Drug Administration allows them to be uh, in products, and they say that, that you should just keep them to low percentages but I feel like they're a very inexpensive foaming device that isn't necessary. And the fact that there may be a carcinogenic component, what's the point? I, I just don't see why we should use them. Now, once again, just like the parabens, 
I, I'm sure that I'm getting sulfates in a lot of the things I use at home because I'm not totally picky across the board about it. I'm particular when it comes to what's going into my hair, on my face, and base, and in my shower. Um, it, you know, I've got hand soaps around the house though that have sulfates in it. So I, you know, I, I kind of, I don't go crazy about it. Maybe I should a little bit more, but I, I sort of pick and choose my battles. Um, and while we're talking about some negatives in the shower, this is another one that I want to make all of you aware of. Um, this is something that Dr. Oz first kind of made very popular a few years ago. He talked about, I've always, um, thought that having a, a filter on your shower head is a good idea just to get rid of the chlorine because it dries the skin out. Chlorine is very, well, you know, chlorine's a whole another can of worms. But if nothing else, we know it dries the skin out. Um, what I didn't realize until I heard Dr. Oz, though, is he was more concerned with chlorine, the, the steam, the vapors that you're inhaling, the damage that that chlorine is doing to your lungs. Um, when I heard him talk about that, I thought, okay, it's time to do something about it. And, you know, that's an easy fix. My husband went to, I don't know, Home Depot or Lowe's, and he found a shower filter. It attaches to to the nozzle before, I mean, to the, before you put the nozzle on, and then you put the nozzle onto the little, to the little filter, and it's very small. It's a charcoal filter. It filters out the majority of the, uh, of the chlorine, and I mean, I immediately noticed a difference in my skin, but it's kind of, I feel good knowing that not only am I not breathing in possibly damaging chemicals, but my kids especially aren't. Um, so that's an easy fix. 20 bucks, you can go, you know, don't go buy the $200 ones. There are some really expensive ones. Go get a charcoal filter for your shower, for every shower in the house. And he said there's one for bathtubs too. Um, I guess it goes on to the to the um, spigot somehow but you know look into that these are three things that we can have control over that are pretty easy um, don't require a lot of money you know there's so many products now that are paraben free SLS free so look for them um, and then same thing with the chlorine in the shower let's not be breathing in all this stuff I I think it's crazy when you look at how many people are suffering from cancer and all kinds of different autoimmune diseases um, and you know, in the case of parabens, they disrupt the um, endocrine system. They have to go and Google it and read about it. It's, it's, um, I don't want to say frightening, but it's compelling. It makes you just say, hey, why, I, I'm just not going to even go there. So I hope that you will, you know, take, take a minute to Google these things. You, it's so easy to get information now. Um, and let me tell you how I go about researching something. I never read just the pro or the con because I feel like it's so easily to be, it's so easy to be um, swayed one way or the other because arguments are always so good, right? So if I really feel strongly one way, I purposely research the um, the counter thinking because for me that's the best way to sort of check what I think. So um, so when you're looking at parabens and sulfates look at both sides because there there's definitely it's very controversial there are experts on both sides that say different things and I, I do think it's important to take it all in um, for me I think it's just better to err on this on the side of caution so I hope that gives you a little bit more information today and um, I really think it's great when you are able to feel empowered to have a little control over this kind of stuff. You know, we have so much information thrown at us. Let's kind of learn how to weed through it all and make our own choices. So that's it. I hope you all have a great day and um, leave a comment below. And don't forget, subscribe if, um, I don't know, <laughs> subscribe if there's anything that you liked hearing. Thanks.